Greetings and welcome to Bioshock Infinite Explained. Uh, this is going to be a special walkthrough of the game where the goal is going to be not to show you the game but to explain the game, to explain the ending, to explain the foreshadowing, to explain what is going on at each point. If you do not know the story of Bioshock Infinite, if you haven't played it through yourself yet, um, then I suggest you, you, you do that first because this walkthrough is going to be completely um, full of, of spoilers from the very beginning. But for those of you that have played through the game are looking for a, a bit more kind of expansion and exploration on what happened and why then I hope you will enjoy this commentary on the game uh, we're going to be playing through in the newly unlocked 1999 mode uh, which may well be painful um, but we'll see how we do and I'm also going to play it with the uh, subtitles on um, so even if you can't quite catch the sound properly you can read what people are saying um, I'm going to try and be quiet when there is dialogue so you can hear it but I will try and, uh, and expand and explain on, on what's going on and what's being said uh, what's going on and what's being said um, after um, various people have spoken. Hopefully we'll have time to talk a bit of strategy as well, Vigors, gun, uh, sorry, Vigors and uh, guns and all that kind of stuff, uh, but we will get to that when we come to it. Uh, we've got the... Booker. Are you afraid of God? No, but I'm afraid of you! I'm afraid of you. Uh, we're playing with some of the DLC, uh, the pre-order DLC, and um, I'll talk about that more when I come to it. The mind of the subject will desperately struggle to create memories where none exist. Uh, this is from Lutis, and this is a clue to us that um, a lot of our memories are going to be fake, made up. Excuse me. How much longer? One goes into an experiment knowing one could fail. One does not undertake an experiment knowing one has failed. Can we get back to the rowing? I suggest you do. No, We're you. never going to get there. No. I mean, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would assist. Perhaps you should ask him. I imagine he has a greater interest in getting there than I do. I suppose he does. But there's no point in asking. Why not? Because he doesn't row. He doesn't row? No. Doesn't grow. Ah, I see what you mean. Okay, so sitting in front of us we have Lutis and Lutis, des described at the moment as a lady and a gentleman. Um, they are the the reason we are here. Um, in fact, they have uh, brought us here. Remember this. Remember these are spoilers. Uh, they have brought us here to try and undo uh, what Comstock and Elizabeth are planning to do in the future. Um, uh, the hey, somebody meeting me here? I'd certainly hope so. It does seem like a dreadful place to be stranded. And there's someone inside. Indeed. Now, the, uh, it is the male Lutis that actually uh, wants us to take on this mission, um, and the female Lutis does not, hence why they had that bit of dialogue there, and she's only doing it because he's actually threatened that if she doesn't help him uh, do this, then uh, he's going to get out of there. I mean, they, they um, are, are a key part, the Lutis and Lutis are, are, are a key part of, of the whole story and, and why the, the, the timeline kind of takes place, and seeing what has occurred, they have decided that they want to try and undo it by bringing us here. And of course, we aren't the first um, book of DeWitt that they have brought here. That they have brought here. Do it. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. This is your last chance. Now, um, of course, that's not true because um, there will be many, many book of DeWitts that. Excuse me. It's Booker DeWitt. I guess you're expecting me. Many, many Booker Dewe Dewitts that uh, that walk this way, and uh, water and uh, the idea of washing and cleansing is a huge part of this game and the symbolism um, used in the story. So we shall uh, take our first dunk here, and we'll talk more about the, uh, the the symbolism and the options of baptism and washing as we get to the various scenes. Of thy sins shall I wash? Now this is the question about whether it's ever really possible to be cleansed from things that we have done in the past. Comstock obviously believes that he can be, and but Booker do, believes that he cannot. From Sodom shall I lead? Th is these are here? clearly 
biblical references, even if not directly uh, biblical, uh, like maybe not literal biblical references, but certainly the implication is um, is biblical. Now this is an interesting one. Uh, this is the uh, the map of where the city of Columbia has been flying. Um, you can see it up here. We've got the uh, condensed schedule to and from Columbia, uh, departing, returning. So this is the Columbia flight schedule. Be prepared. He's on his way. You must stop him. See, well, we can infer from this that this is uh, Comstock himself, um, who is uh, directing the lighthouse keeper to stop me, you, Booker DeWitt. Um, but as, as we'll see in a minute, it has gone rather wrong for the lighthouse keeper in that respect. We shall take a bit of money as we go. It's interesting to note that uh, in when it when the game talks about religion, apart from one very blunt reference at the end, it discusses religion but doesn't really refer to Christianity, Jesus, or any kind of direct kind of. There's no real kind of Christianity in the religion. It's just described to as the religion. The, we get do get a reference of, a reference to Jesus right at the end of the game, but I believe that that is the only one. And, and there's also kind of no no crosses, uh, no crucifixes, no Bibles anywhere. Um, whereas in Bioshock One, uh, Bibles were everywhere. Um, so this is a, a departure. Shit. Now who is this? Poor man, this is the lighthouse keeper. But let's not feel too sorry for him because he was here to kill us, to stop us. Now, the question is who has killed the lighthouse keeper? And the answer is don't disappoint us. The Lutices, Lutis and Lutis, have taken out the lighthouse keeper to allow us to continue on in our mission. Um, it's also possible, of course, that in an alternative reality, uh, Booker was stopped uh, by the lighthouse keeper. So the Lutices, in trying to correct their experiment, um, have done this again and again and trying to change the variables each time. So in killing the lighthouse keeper, another variable has been taken care of. And here we are at the top of the uh, lighthouse. Now if we just pick up some more sea of silver eagles, get as much as we can as we head that way. And we're going to ring the bells to summon our entrance into the city. Now looking at that box that we were given at the very beginning of the game... Um, there was various items which uh, kind of uh, uh, foreshadow what's kind of going on. We had the uh, we have a key with a cage on it, um, which may well be the one that um, Elizabeth opened the door with uh, right at the very end. Where you know when she kind of goes, "Oh, I've had this key all along." Uh, there was obviously the gun that we that we uh, we drop in a second, and uh, there was various photos and uh, and think and things like that. On the box itself, there was uh, Booker Dewitt and a reference to our previous military career, uh, which is a very important part of uh, Booker's storyline that explains how he actually ends up um, reaching that division point between Booker and Comstock. And with that lovely little tune. The lighthouse opens. Now, for those of you that remember later in the plot, this chair is almost identical uh, to the one that, that they uh, we find in the kind of laboratories later on. So this is uh, there are kind of drawn similarities and parallels between our lives and the life of, of Elizabeth as well. You know, items that kind of repeat, uh, appear again and again. And of course, we're wearing very exciting corduroy grey trousers. And hallelujah indeed. And welcome to Columbia, the city in the clouds. An impossible city, just like the impossible city under the water, uh, was explored all those years ago in Bioshock 1. But uh, that may well be a, a storyline future to uh, this particular reality.
Now it's interesting to note that we, we don't see our face uh, very often in uh, Bioshock. Uh, sorry, yeah, in uh, Bioshock Infinite, we had that look in the uh, the water at the very start. We have the uh, the there are brief reflections in the window just then, and then occasionally you see a photo later on. But that that's more or less it. And part of the reason for that may well be to stop the user, the player, uh, from seeing the, the uh, comparisons between ourselves and Comstock. Why would he send his saviour unto us if we will not raise a finger for our own salvation? And though we deserved not his mercy, he has led us to this new Eden. A last chance for redemption. Now we do have a distinct difference here between the uh, the city of Rapture and the city of Columbia. Both cities are um, supposed to be paradise, are supposed to be uh, New Edens, to use the phrase right here, and uh, obviously both have a, a, a leader that takes them there. We've got uh, Andrew Ryan in the first, and we've got um, Zachary Comstock here, but there's a difference in that the, the, the Bioshock 1 city is, is based around communism and public ownership and uh, uh, equality to, to an extent. Whereas this city is far more based around uh, capitalism and the idea of uh, f uh, free enterprise, albeit one that's uh, conta uh, very, very contained in a religious morality. If you remember in Bioshock 1, religion is completely banned and Bibles are smuggled in. Um, whereas here, of course, religion is all the part of it, uh, the word of the prophet being absolutely everywhere. The seed of the prophet shall sit the throne and drown in flame the mountains of man. Now, of course, this is the, the prophecy that eventually spooks the Lutices. It's not so much that the seed of the prophet shall sit the throne, but it's this drown in flame the mountains of man. And when we see Elizabeth in 1984 bombing New York, we can see that that prophecy does indeed come to pass. Um, just a little note on uh, the gorgeousness of this game is the clarity of these reflections. Now, I'm, my shadow quality is, I think I'm running on about medium here, but when I do run on, if I wasn't recording, I'd be running higher, and uh, the reflections really are just, just mirror images, which is absolutely beautiful. And in my womb shall grow the seed of the prophet, or not, of course, because Comstock, unfortunately, was sterile, and Lady Comstock never actually was able to give birth to the the coming heir to Comstock. Alright, let's grab some money where we can. And here's our first audio log, so I'll shut up while we play it. Love the prophet because he loves the sinner. Without the sinner, what need is there for a redeemer? Excuse me, where am I? Heaven. What grace has forgiveness? I just keep such questions to myself, unless I want to get made. Um, that did just show one of the uh, slight uh, bugs in uh, Bioshock, in that you do uh, quite oftenly get um, audio streams lapping over them each other, especially with those audio logs. Um, it's probably going to be good practice for me to absolutely for, to freeze when we get audio logs, so we uh, don't get that happening again. So uh, note to self: I won't wander around, so we can actually um, speak and analyse each one. Basically, all we had there was a uh, we had a, a conversation from Lady Comstock talking about the, the 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 nature of sin and the idea that you know you could, forgiveness only kind of works if you have actually things to forgive, and of course both Comstock and Booker do have things to forgive their actions in the wars and their actions in regards to uh, previous racism, um, and uh, we have our, our little pilgrim there telling us that this is the closest place to paradise, as long of course if you are white. Okay. This is clearly quite an important scene, but I shall talk about it after the event so we can uh, enjoy the, the event one more time. 
wonders, it would have been enough. If the prophet had just accepted the three golden gifts of the pounders and not prayed for a deliverance, it would have been enough. If the prophet had only... Is it someone new? Someone from the sodden below? Newly come to Colombia to be watered clean before our prophet, our founders, and our lord? I just need passage into the city. Passage to the city. Brother, the only way to Colombia is through rebirth in the sweet waters of baptism. Will you be cleansed, brother? Hey, I'm just looking to pass through. Take his hand. Reach out. Cleanse yourself, brother. Glory be. Praise be to the founders. Praise be to the Lord. Let's end with this or turn around and get back on that rocket. Might as well get it over with. So here we have. <laughs> Here we have our, our baptism scene. Uh, this is obviously the first of uh, of two baptism scenes we have in the game, but okay. Well, it looks like these guys aren't going to shut up until we get baptized. So let's get this over with, and then we'll talk about it in a second. I don't know, brothers and sisters, but this one doesn't look clean to me. Who's there? Who's there? Bring us the curb and wipe away the dead. What do you want? Got a deal to it. Open this door right now. I told you. Not gonna do it. Go away, Mr. Dewitt. Mr. Dewitt. Okay, so let's try and digest all that. That was the the uh, the first baptism scene in the game, but of course, it is the first for this version of of uh, this version of Book of Dewitt, because in his version of reality, he turns down the baptism, but Comstock accepts it. Comstock is uh, reborn as Comstock, whereas Booker remains Booker. Booker goes on and uh, can't live with his actions, previous actions in the war, goes on to become a broken. Uh, gambling alcoholic, whereas Comstock, um, buoyed on by his new kind of confidence and newfound freedom and redemption at baptism, goes on to become uh, the, the leader of the city and kind of strikes out as a, as, a, as a future leader. But there's a few other issues there. I mean, what, we, it's the same preacher both times, uh, so why doesn't he recognise us? Well, if you look closely at his eyes, you'll see that he is blind in his older age, so he probably doesn't recognise us. But at the same time, it seems that he does try to drown us, or at the very least he kind of baptises us twice and holds us under the water. Um, the reason for this is not entirely clear. Um, has he been warned by Comstock that we are coming, and so he attempts to kind of kill us on the way? Um, has there been... Uh, is it just a, m a mistake that our sins are so bad we can't be washed clean? Is it that uh, he can't wash us completely clean because our sins are still um, present in Comstock? Um, I I'm not entirely sure, but it that certainly has seemed to be debated. What is Columbia, if not another arc for another time? The idea here is that the best of humanity, or the best of America, is being uh, arced, I mean, just like the stories of Noah's Ark, rescued, held apart for 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, um, or more. Uh, for another time, which is a reference then to the scene in 1984, where the city returns, which is the other time, to, to, to wreak vengeance or flame down from the mountain. So, our first proper look at the streets of Colombia.
the floating city of Colombia, made possible by the technology of Lutis and Lutis, specifically the uh, the female version, who uh, is obviously a physicist and is able to manipulate the uh, the physics to uh, make the city float, which is also what allows her to uh, open the tears. Now, somewhere around here, one of these guys makes a reference to um, a political opponent to Father Comstock, uh, who is seen, has, was seen in one of the previews to the game, but was never actually appeared in the real thing. But, of course, may still appear in the um, the, the future DLC. DLC. Ah, oh, yeah. This is the this is the reference. Sultan Stall is the uh, the p possible political opponent, but uh, he doesn't appear in the game other than his scalp. Um, his scalp appears, um, unfortunately, in the uh, the Vox uh, Revolution later on on that horrible board. Of course, the only missing space being the one for Comstock later on. These two appear in the uh, the photos in front of Elizabeth later on. I think they're under pacifists or something like that. But let's pick up our next Vox, and we'll have a little listen once these two guys are quiet. And then the archangel showed a vision. A city, lighter than air. I asked her... Why do you show this to me, Archangel? I'm not a strong man. I'm not a righteous man. I am not a holy man. And she told me the most remarkable thing. You're right, Prophet. But if grace is within the grasp of one such as you, how can anyone else not see it in themselves? So Comstock is known as the Prophet. A Prophet is one who uh, gives messages from God or can see the future. Um, uh, of course he doesn't. He's lying. He is a con artist. He is seeing the future through by looking into alternative realities through the machine of Lutis. He is able to make these accurate predictions because he is able to view them. There is nothing magical going on. There is no um, deity at work here. And there, of course, is our first reference to Vox Populi. Now, I could be wrong on this, but I, my guess would be that Vox Populi means voice of the people. So we have the idea, kind of, uh, pro uh, the uh, proletariat versus the, the, the rich, uh, which is obviously a storyline that's played out in history many, many times, rich versus poor. Uh, thank you. So, uh, um, and we'll see more about the Vox Populi as we head on further into the game. Now these horses are very very cool but we, they don't really play much plot line. Uh, we never got to ride one at any point which was a little bit of a shame. But let's have a little look at the wonderful procession. And there again we have a reference to the battle, the battle that both uh, Booker and that Comstock uh, both fought in, and of course that was the moment where he was baptised, made the change, or saw the light, as the banner once said there. We then have our first kind of reference to the child, the miracle child, uh, not so much as a miracle child as a stolen child, stolen from Booker as Anna and then renamed to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, incidentally, uh, translates literally as um, from God or even son of um, son of the God or daughter of the God, I guess, because it, as it's the female version, um, which of course, as she's supposed to be the son of the prophet or daughter of the prophet, that would make sense for her role in this. Anna means grace or um, kindness. I'm... I'm not that honourable. I'm the evil booker. 
the uh, game makers have done a wonderful uh, job of making the the environment seem real, down to uh, so many details in the in the environments that almost people will never really kind of look at. And also the radios as well, giving constant updates on what's going on around the place. It's a uh, uh, a brilliantly interactive world. Um, little areas like this that there's really kind of no reason ever to to kind of come over to. And uh, but we've got characters over here. We've got fully fledged gardens over here. And uh, other than a uh, a bit of cheese and another voxophone, not a lot to be found. And in the distance we can hear our wonderful little barbershop quartet. Which of course is singing Beach Boys, I believe, which is a song from way after when this uh, game is set. But if we look, have a look behind them, we'll see we've got a reference that says the music of tomorrow today, um, literally because um, this music has been stolen from the future by um, Albert Fink using one of the tears. Uh, he hears various songs and uh, releases them earlier than in theory has been scheduled. So let's have a little listen to that uh, let's have a little listen to that uh, voxophone that we uh, picked up a second ago. One man goes into the waters of baptism a different man comes out born again. But who is that man who lies submerged? Perhaps that swimmer is both sinner and saint. And there, in a nutshell, we have the entire plotline of the game. Booker DeWitt is baptised, out comes Comstock. If Booker is not baptised, he remains as Booker. But, like the reference in the tape, he is both the sinner and the saint. He, uh, in one, one reality becomes good and one reality becomes bad, but the, the, the seeming is the opposite uh, in, in that particular case. Now, do not alert Comstock to your presence. Stop. Whatever you do, do not pick number 77. Stop. Lutes. And here we've got uh, Lutis, Lutes, however you want to pronounce it, have given us a, a, a telegram. In a, in a sense, of course, they are trying to change the variables. They can't change the constants, but they can change the variables. But unfortunately, drawing number 77 for us is a constant and cannot be changed. Um, I believe there's a little Easter egg here, as if we look down in front of us, there is no one there, but if we look through the telescope, I believe we will see Lutes and Lutes um, having a bit of downtime, enjoying some juggling um, in some way, or perhaps just messing with our heads. Well, let's head over towards uh, the... Hello. The fair, and we'll see in the distance our first look at the... the Vigors! Now, obviously there is a big link between the Vigors of Colombia and the, um, oh, I've forgotten their name, the uh, the powers in, in Rapture. They have a slightly different name in Rapture. Oh, oh, forgive me, I've forgotten what, exactly what they are, but, um, oops. Let me just get out here for a second. Uh, again, the, the link is going to be to do with the fact that um, the, the tears that are made by um, Elizabeth and Lutes has allowed the inventors in this particular country to see what's happened in the other. And that goes for the technology that goes into the songbird, as well as the powers um, from um, the Vigors as well. Uh, we will have a look at some of these uh, videos as we go around, but um, not just yet. In fact, that's probably our first half an hour of um, the Bioshock Infinite Explained Up. Um, if you've enjoyed this explanation and you'd like to see it continue, please give the video a like. If you've got any other theories that you'd like to discuss, do stick them into the comment section and do subscribe to the channel if you want to make sure you catch the latest episodes. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, take care and um, hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.